suffer. Now, uh, Jesus uh, was born uh, a subject of the Roman Empire during a period that is referred to as the Pax Romana or the Roman peace. Uh, it was uh, a period in which the Roman Empire enjoyed continuous peace, prosperity, and security. Uh, it began about 27 years or so before the Common Era and lasted for about 200 years. Uh, many scholars believe that uh, Jesus was born uh, around four years uh, before the Common Era. And if this is correct, that means that uh, the Roman, uh, uh, the sorry, the Pax Romana uh, was about 23 years in when Jesus was born. Uh, Dr. Smith, uh, uh, give us uh, a, a, a sense of the political and, and socioeconomic climate that prevailed during that time, focusing on the years of the Pax Romana that actually intersected uh, uh, Jesus' life. What did the Pax Romana mean for the subjects of this vast Roman empire? And, and in particular, what did it mean for those uh, subjects, those Roman subjects living in Palestine, especially in the area of Judea where Jesus uh, was born? Surely. I mean, the Pax Romana is not a specific time period, but it's usually associated with or applied to the period of the uh, Roman Empire and or what we call the Principate, which began with the reign of Augustus and which actually in many ways um, uh, marks the end of a period of civil war within the Roman Republic. And during that period, uh, of the Roman Republic that led up to the Principate, up to the period of the Empire, you saw Rome's expansion. In the Punic Wars, Rome established its hegemony over the western part of the Empire. And then in the end of the second and beginning of the first century BC, uh, the Roman Empire expanded and consolidated its possessions in the east specifically in Egypt and Asia Minor, and along with that came Palestine. Now, Rome extended to Palestine, and specifically to the Jews, a uh, policy of privilege. And that first was given by, um, uh, by uh, Pompey the Great, and then after he was defeated by Julius Caesar, Caesar extended the same sort of uh, privilege to the Jews. And one of the things that's curious is that for Jews, the, in the Roman eyes, the Jews were a very curious people because the Romans were a very gregarious and social folk. And the Jews, because of their dietary restrictions, were intentionally withdrawn from society. So they were peculiar in the, Rome, in the eyes of Romans. But there was something that the Jews possessed that the Romans admired, and that was their religion was ancient, and to be old was good, and to be new was looked upon with suspicion by the Romans, I mean, reflecting a very conservative sensibility. And consequently, the Jews were exempt from various, uh, uh, various obligations such as military service or participating in Roman religious rituals, which would be deemed to be uh, 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 engaging in polytheism, which would be contrary to Jewish teachings. Now, Palestine itself was, um, was not a terribly valuable province. In fact, for Pontius Pilate to be made governor of Palestine or Judea, as we call it, uh, was not a high compliment. This was a backwater province. I mean, essentially, the Romans occupied territory for two primary reasons. One was to draw resources from those provinces, such as the great mines of Spain or the, um, uh, the, the uh, granaries and uh, fields that produced grain to sustain the major cities, such in North Africa, whether it's Egypt or then what we called Africa province uh, there in modern day Tunis. But you didn't have any of that really in Judea. Instead, you had taxes. So one of the things that the Romans were concerned about was being able to tax the people. And this meant that the Romans, on the one hand, exhibited a policy of religious toleration. They didn't try to impose their religion 
on the people of that period. I mean, that's a surefire way to arouse dissent. And you can't collect taxes if you're having to put down a rebellion. So the Romans were not inclined to do that. On the other hand, the Romans did want taxes. And for instance, when we, when in the birth narrative, it says that Caesar Augustus was call, was summoning all people to be counted. A census was to be taken. Well, the purpose of the census was to, to know how, how big the population was in order to be able to tax them to get maximal wealth from the taxes. But, but uh, Palestine was also a, a province that was occupied by Roman military forces. And there in Jerusalem, right next to the temple, you had the fortress Antonia, which is where the Roman soldiers, the Roman garrison was located. And part of that was that if you had the Roman garrison right there next to the temple, if there was the expectation on the part of the people that uh, any sort of religious uprising out of religious fervor, out of expectation of a Messiah or whatever, uh, if it would start in Jerusalem, it would be focused around the temple. And therefore, having the fortress right next to the temple meant that the emperor, the Roman governor, could uh, deploy troops immediately to put down any sort of rebellion that might break out there. While I said that religious toleration was extended, the Romans could be very, very brutal in their occupation. Let me read a quick a short passage from the Roman historian Tacitus. I mean, Tacitus is a Roman aristocrat, and he wrote a work called Agricola, and it's speaking about uh, uh, it's speaking about Roman leadership in Britain. And in this story, or in this history, he places into the mouths of a Briton living in the northern part of Britain uh, the following words, the following descriptions of what it meant to be a Roman citizen, or ro not a Roman citizen, but a Roman subject. There are no tribes beyond us. Nothing indeed but waves and rocks, and yet more terrible Romans, from whose oppression escape is, um, is vainly sought by obedience and submission. Robbers of the world, having by their universal plunder exhausted the land, they rifle the deep. If the enemy be rich, they are rapacious. If he be poor, they lust for dominion. Neither the east nor the west has been able to satisfy them. Alone among men, they covet with equal eagerness, poverty and riches. To robbery, slaughter, plunder, they give the lying name of empire. They make a desert and call it peace. They make a desert and call it peace. Now, whether these are the actual words of a Briton, a Caledonian, or whether they are Tacitus's words, they sum up an attitude uh, about the, the avarice that drove the, uh, the empire. And notice the key point is, it's not just that they sought wealth, but there was something in the idea of dominion, that the Roman Empire covered most of the known world. And therefore, that gave them a sense of greatness and glory. And that's part of what's driving uh, the Roman sense of conquest or the Roman impulse of conquest. 